Yo guys, welcome to Do My Trains, and we're here on the bench work. I just want to share with you a little bit how the track laying process goes. Uh, how at least I I do it. There's a million ways to do it, but you know I found out that this is something that works well for me. Um, I start by laying all the uh, sidings. So that's what you see here. These two are already done. And why do I do that? Because sidings, they, they have two tracks and they come together to one. So it's a little bit more critical than necessarily a spur that just ends in, in, in the bushes. It's easier to lay spurs and sidings. So I started with that. So that's also what you see. I started with all the sidings coming in from the CNNW interchange all the way to here where we are right now. And if you have large areas with turnouts like this one here, I generally tend to do a lot of the connected ones like these two crossing um, in one go just to get everything lined up how you want it. So how do you do it? Well, I explained in the previous video, I use a bus system underneath the, the bench work. And then I have pre-made these uh, feeder wires. And it's really uh, the, one of the reasons why I like doing this is because I, I, when I started the my previous layout, I couldn't really solder well. And you, this really teaches you to, to solder. <laughs> you got to make uh, quite a few of these. And I can do it now in about 30 seconds a piece. You got your jig all set up. So this is really so easy. You can do this on your bench work. So you don't have to do it here. I don't like the solder on the layout. I definitely don't like the solder on track because as I said, I'm not really good at soldering. It's not easy to solder on track. I mean, you can do it, but if I do it, you, I melt away at half of the tie. So I don't like doing that. And this method is actually quite reliable. So the tactic that I use is to go into a little bit of detail and just put it down here. If you have these different sections of track, now this can be, you know, an entire piece of flex track or could be a turnout, is that I would put the, um, the, the, the feeder wire on this one, and then I would only trust one connection. So I would trust this connection, but I wouldn't trust that one. So that means I put another feeder wire here because from this feeder wire, I will trust that connection, but not that one. So every two pieces, uh, I put another feeder wire. Now I use, I'm using a lot of flex track on this layout and a lot of uh, long single pieces. So I actually don't have that many feeder wires. Now the downside of the system is you have to plan a little bit where you're going to put everything. So I already drilled the holes for both the uh, throw bar, for the wire, for the, the feeders, both turnouts. There's a black wire here as a drill that's only to connect it. Um, this is not glued in place yet. And there's a red feeder here, black there. And this section track is cut to the right length. It still needs to be you know put there in the rail joiner properly, but that doesn't matter. So that's step one, is you want to figure out where your holes are and how you're going to position everything. And then I use these push pins just in the initial phase, just to, I think it has to go somewhere like there and there, and just to keep everything in, in place. I keep it in place while I cut the flex track to the right length, and also keep it in place to check if I um, drilled the holes correctly for the throw bars. So I made this very simple little tool where I can just put it down the middle of the throw bar see if the hole is drilled correctly yes it is and if I can move it freely yes I can uh, you definitely want to check that before <laughs> you start gluing anything um, and then I normally mark it with a pen or pencil just where exactly it goes because everything is going to be uh, loosened up again and then I put uh, some wood glue underneath I smudge it a bit with my finger put some weights on top and, and then that's that. And that section track is done. That's how I did all this here as well. So this is all firmly in place. Now if you want to make it a bit difficult for yourself, you can add some extra steps. I didn't make it easy for myself because I want to add, a, add some randomness to the ties. So you see the spacing there is uneven. There it's uneven. The tie is crooked. That tie is crooked. And those things you have to do obviously before you glue the track down. So this piece of track right here that I was talking about is already cut to length, but I still in its weathered as well. I don't know how well we can see that on the camera. Here are some much lighter ties. Uh, weathered one side of the track, the fixed track. I didn't weather the other side yet. I already explained why in another video. 
And now I'm just going to cut some of the, the bracing and move around some of the ties on the back just to give a little bit more randomness because I, I don't want my, you know, layout my track to be highly manicured. Now if we just have a quick peek underneath the layout, you see all these wires here. And that's it, it's exactly how it's supposed to be. So after I laid all the track, I'll just take a, uh, a plier and strip these and then squeeze on the connector as we, we talked about in the last video. And the bus will just go through these holes that are in here. Connect it into the bus and that's that. Simple as that. So let's have a look at the uh, plan and what we have been doing. And as you notice, I started all the way here in the back. And that was because I didn't have any weather track yet. Uh, I only had you know, fresh out of the pack track. And you can lay it here because it's in the back it's staging and no one sees it. And this was also a good practice just to brushing up my track laying skills a bit. And from there on, on I'm going, I've been laying all the sidings that we have uh, come across. So the only one thus far is right here, down all the way down here, is the passing siding in the yard. Because all the yard tracks in this uh, engine terminal are just uh, spurs, uh, basically. So that's why I did this one here. Went around the bridge. Wasn't really planning on doing the, the lift gate, but I thought, I'm, you know, I've got it here. Might as well do the lift gate and get that done. And then I can, you know, ride trains at some point. That's the, the big plan, obviously. And then moving into near north, this is the section that's done. This is the section we just looked at. Um, it's been an old track plan to some changes, but it doesn't really matter. The, the, the current one is, is, is glued down. But these are basically all sidings, and these are all sidings. So we just have to lay the majority of this all in one go. This spur here, and a spur there, and then this uh, abandoned spur. That, that can all be done later. It's not a big deal. This will be done soon in a matter of a few days, I hope. And then we are going to move on to the last section of near north with a double crossover. That's going to be a fun one. And then we're going into this brewery section. And I think that's going to require most of my skills and everything I've learned thus far uh, because it is a lot of curve track, curve flex track, and they, they end up or start at turnouts. It's never easy. And then we have these turnouts, one, two, three, four, that are basically in a in a block. We could say one, two, three. And there's another block here with, with two turnouts uh, and a curve turnout crossing and in between there's another turnout. So this is, this is definitely going to require a lot of patience and skills. <laughs> And I'm going to use everything I've learned on the rest of the layout in this section. Like I said, I already laid a lot of track before, but still you always learn. And this is the first time I printed out a track plan and, and glued it down. So what I've learned from that is you really need to follow the plan, especially in curves. If you just deviate a little bit from the curve, you're not going to have a nice curve, but you're going to have some kind of wobbly uh, banana avocado shape. So don't do that. And of course, the cool trestle, I still need to build the actual trestle. I think this piece of track will, will have to wait for a few weeks. And down here is, is the car float. And that will probably have to wait even longer. I do have a buddy of mine. He's he's, he's gearing up to, to help me. I might let him make this just to you know to get some, some speed in here. And we got the bridges as well. Uh, but he's he's not ready yet. He needs a few more weeks to to clear out some other work. Yeah. So after the brewery, we got this section. This is all relatively straightforward. And then we connect the layout up right there. This is the last piece of track I'm gonna do. And I think the golden spike ceremony is also gonna be there. And it's gonna be there because that track actually doesn't exist in the operations plan. But it's just a piece with two turnouts that I added, so I can have continuous running if I wish to do so. Well, here we are. It's finished. It's all laid down now. And then some. I've just been continuing all the track. This is a bit of a, this is a tricky section. Let me get that right. The double crossover here. But let me, let me come back to that in a minute. I was just thinking, what can we talk about now? What can be useful? Um, and just to go a little bit more into detail of, of laying the track and some minor changes I made and, and just why I made them. So let's start with a, a bit of an easy, easy minor change. And that's in this section right here. Because I found out that the the line of this upper track was a bit undefined. It was a bit under an angle. And, and while looking here, and I, I really noticed that when I was on the track, and the computer didn't notice it that much. But now 
is everything is measured out but despite that I noticed it was a bit off off track so I measured it again so you might be able to see that thick black line and then there is the uh, the pen line I added to it to make it uh, parallel to this track right here but because let's see if I can get that in there but we do need to line up with it so as you see there's a little little bend right here in the track just to get it uh, lined up with, with with that section right there that's parallel and that's fine uh, before it was a bit of a yeah just a connection from here like somehow it goes to there but i found i find maybe it's a personal opinion if if you lay the track and you make this bend a little bit more defined it just looks a bit better than just connecting two pieces uh, by a single track so that was an easy one now here uh, i i think i just measured it wrong this turnout was meant to be here and it's, it's difficult to see but I plan to cut off sections of track of the turnout this one and this one um, to make this curve more gradual but somehow I measured the turnout incorrectly I think and I thought I could cut off way more than I actually could so that basically meant that that wasn't gonna work and what's the situation here so let me get these brushes just to explain what was happening initially this turnout that now goes like this, was over here. Let's put it right there. And then this track is leading like this. So you see they cross each other right here. And this is way too close to the turnout because it basically means track has to make a, <laughs> a hard bend to go from the original turnout position into here. So what I did is I moved this turnout to where it is now. So you see that the bend in the track is now more here in the middle of the turnouts. So if you actually look at the track itself, see if I can get, see if I can get in here somehow, you can see that the actual bend in the track, this this entire track is not bend, this entire track is not bent equally. Most of the bend is in this section right here. Maybe it's difficult to see, but. I see it, it's right here. So it actually goes straight a little bit. Then there's a hard bend, and there's a sl more slight bend going uh, into the turnout right there. So technically speaking, if I just zoom out, then we have a curve. It's not Technically speaking, it's not a really nice curve. So we have a curve here, and then we have a curve here. And then we have a little bit of straight, and then we have a curve right there. So you might think that's a bit uh, nitpicking, but I just wanted to share with you more in detail some things that I changed, and that's that's one of them. Um, yeah, so now if we look at the, the actual track plan, let me get my camera in here, because this is a, an important section. So there's a few use cases right here. So let me get some cars, and one of them is that the cars are, are um, let me just start with this. One use case is that the car is spotted right here. And because it is a switching layout, I went over that in other videos, this car can be here um, because it's, it's left on the last shift or because it needs to be inspected or cleaned or whatever. And if we follow this track right here, it goes into um, one industry, the siding, a spur, and then it goes to this double track other uh, freight house right here. So this is a lot of traffic that has to go through this one turnout. So I thought it was very important that I can keep that clear when there's a car spotted right there. And if there's a car is spotted there for whatever reason, I think it's also important that you can still pass. So that can happen as well. Remember this is not mainline, it's switching layout. So it just needs to fit and it fits. And lastly, but not least, if we have, Another train here that's just switching the area and needs to be able to pass from that side as well. So that all fits nicely. Now moving on a little bit. And you know, you, you only want to use double uh, crossover. We absolutely have to. Because if you count the, the number of, of uh, tongs here, or the word is, I lost it. Um, it's almost the same as four normal turnouts mean you have twice the amount of frogs so you only want to do this if you can really replace the use of two three or four other um, turnouts if you can justify it that way in my case i have no other choice 
because here we're coming around the curve and I want to shoot in here to staging. So what I could have done, let me just zoom out, get a bigger picture of what's happening. What I could have done is, is taken this industry starting right here and pulled that into staging right there. thus eliminating the uh, double step crossover. But then I, I would lose these uh, spots right here and there's three um, spots right there. So that is not something I want to lose. Um, so hence I'm using this double slip crossover. Now, could it be a crossing as well? Well, the answer is yes, it could be. Let me first get it, try to explain it from this angle. Then this one track right here, this track, you can go anywhere. You can go to track number one, go this route, track number two next to it, track number three, and track number four right there. All from here because of this turnout right there. Um, so you really need this turnout. It's really essential because otherwise you cannot go from this track to the other tracks or, or the other way around from the other tracks, go to this track. And why is that so essential? Let me just go around to the other side. Explain a little bit. So where I am standing right now is the yard. So all the traffic is gonna come through here. And it, if the scenario could very well be that there is, um, this is full with, with cars because there's some industries here. And then these two tracks are being used for, for switching. This is this area. Someone needs to run around, so you need these two tracks. And then if you want to go to the uh, ferry, that's way at the end, you got to go from here. You gotta take this track number three. And then from track number three, you do have to cross over to the right, to the other side, because the ferry is on the right side. So it is also very apparent from, from this direction, from the traffic flows, that you're able to come from this left side to the right side of this, uh, this, these industry tracks and these sidings. Hope that was a bit clear. I hope not too long-winded. So I want to continue this. I want to, I want to take my time because I want to get this right. And everyone, anyone who has worked with this number six, um, this is number five, this is number six, so the geometry is slightly off. You can see it here in the plan. It doesn't really line up. But I think I'm, I'll be able to, to, to smudge it a bit without anyone noticing. Uh, actually, note to self-edit. Don't say that and just smudge it. No one will notice it. Uh, yeah. We'll see how that turns out. I'll show you guys. Um, yeah, this is my paint station. So I do I try to do batches. I do all the turnouts I want to do for a certain section. And then I do at least five sections of uh, flex track and then one of the sections <laughs> you really want to know what goes on in my head one of these sections of flex track as you see four here is tax and i tax it and i put it here in the pile for the yard because i'm going to need a buckload of flex track for the yard 10 pieces and i don't want to be painting 10 pieces of flex track at the end of the day uh, all at once just to finish the yard because this is going to drive me nuts so i'm slowly skimming off of my paint sessions and piling it up there to make that job a little bit easier and um, this is track reserved for the car float all the pieces came in so that's good i already measured it um because of how we we decided to make this bench work a bit lower the cell has to shift a little bit it's not a big deal but that also means then here on the right side I'm just going to, I still have a few centimeters, sorry, a few centimeters that I can cut off here and just have a little bit more space. Yeah, and we covered so much already. I was running out of turnouts, uh, prepared ones. So I did a one a shift of, um, yeah, preparing turnouts. So what do I mean by that? I'm using the Electro Frog. So that means uh, I want to wire, uh, attach a wire to the frog. And I want to cut this bridge right here. Then I want to solder another bridge right there. It only took me two hours to do 15 turnouts, something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, thank Pico for coming with the Unifrog, because you don't have to do any of that. Now, if you're wondering what the track plan of my old layout looked like and how I operated that, check the video that you see on the screen right now. That's all for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.